so today's video is going to be about 20 things I wish I knew before moving to New York. If you clicked on this video, you're obviously interested in 20 things that I wish I would have known or that you guys need to know as well. Um, so let's get into the video. But if you're not already, I would love for you guys to become a subscriber to my channel, become a part of the Love Bug family, be a fellow Love Bug, um, and then also follow me on all my social media to keep up with me outside of YouTube, like my Instagram, my Snapchat, and my Twitter. They'll all be in the description box down below. And also click the notification bell as well so you guys can be notified of when I do upload content like so. So I went ahead and wrote down a list of 20 things that I wish I would have known before I moved here um some I kind of knew but really didn't know too much in depth but these are 20 things and let's go ahead and get into them so I did go ahead and write them down in my notes on my phone and I also wanted to say happy new year's you guys it's 2019 oh my god I can't believe it <laughs> like I'm gonna be 24 this year what the heck but then also the inner conspiracy theorist in me just doesn't believe that time is a concept and maybe I'm just getting wiser. But again, that is just the conspiracy there is in me. So let's get into the 20 things. So the first thing I wish I would have known before I moved to New York is that there are broker fees. I will put the accurate description of what a broker fee right here is and I'm gonna read it to you guys. So on Google it says broker fees vary from firm to firm but are most often 15% of annual rent. So it says a 2,000 monthly apartment will require a $3,600 fee that must be paid when a lease is signed. At the time at the same time you you will be required to pay the property owners one month rent sometimes two. So basically that means you are paying somebody 15% of your annual contract, whether it's six months or 12 months, 24 months, 15 months, however long you do your lease, you're paying them 15% of that each month. For each month, you're paying 15% towards a person that literally just helps you sign a couple papers. They say it makes the process easier, but you guys, there are broker fees, broker fees, broker fees everywhere. And like they said, you have to pay that on top of the one month and the deposit of the apartment. Broker fees can get substantially, substantially tricky and expensive. So before you move here, see if your place has a broker fee. And sometimes you can find those places that don't have any broker fees, which is amazing, but those places go really, really fast. Fast. And on top of that, with the substantial price of rent being higher in New York than anywhere in the US, um, and you have to pay a deposit first month, sometimes second, first and last, and deposit on top of the broker fee, I believe that's why a lot, a lot of people just opt in for roommates in New York like myself, um, or maybe they want to be able to save up that money to get their own place like I'm doing. But they can be very tricky, expensive, and sometimes confusing. So the second thing I should have known before I moved here was that the people are really nice. But I did kind of know this the week before I moved here or the week that I visited here. Um, I realized that people here are pretty nice. It's not like the movies where like, I'm walking here, moving, what are you talking to? They pushing you in the street. It's not like that at all. People are actually really nice. I had a little difficulties getting on the trains, trying to figure out which train I could catch from the World One World Trade Center to Queens, it was just the E train. I wanted to make sure I was on the right train. <laughs> and I was like, wait, is this going uptown or downtown? They were like, well, it's, it's only uptown because this is the first stop. So all you can do is go uptown and they helped me get on the right train. I was even already on it. But they just like talked to me and they was like, are you new? Like, did you need help if you need this? Then do this, this, this. And I have my city mapper app as well. I'm not sponsored by them but city mapper is amazing and is a lifesaver for myself it works amazing so yeah people here are really really nice i really haven't ran into anybody that was rude and yeah i will say people are more nice here than they were to me in miami so just putting that out there the third thing i wish i would have knew but i kind of already knew is that you need to set a budget before you actually move here because you will spend money so for me, I really didn't have a set budget, but I did kind of um, have like a mindset that you're not going to buy groceries from here because they're too expensive. You're not going to go here. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You're going to do certain things that can just work around my financial situation. However, when I did get here, I ran through all of the little money that I did have on buying a bed, buying a bed frame, putting the deposit down. I didn't know that I needed a parking permit for parking on my street. It was just little things that I really didn't know about. But I wish I would have set a budget before I came here. Um, I'm kind of setting one now. It's a lot 
better so i know what i'm spending on groceries a month every month i know what i'll spend on gas which i really don't even drive my car anywhere so that's very minimum i know what my monthly bills are and things like that so just before you get here make sure you get um feel that's why i say visit where you're going before you actually move there so you can get a feel for the prices get a feel for things around that cost and just things like that and even free things just add that into your budget as well like okay well if this is free that means i'll have 24 dollars every month or every week to spend extras or to save so just have a budget before you move here and stick to it because if not you will go over it and you will be broke so the fourth thing i learned here is finding people to be in your friend group that actually can stick around it's kind of tricky because people are very flaky people are just not really invested into friendships like I would be uh, when I love my friends I love my friends when I have a group of friends that I really like to be around like I want to spend time with them but a lot of people here they're not really interested in that and if they are I don't know I had a kind of a bad experience but that's another video so basically for number four I will say just join tinder it's kind of hard to meet people so just join tinder it's okay I actually met some cool people on there that I'm really cool with to this day so join tinder you know what I'm saying like go to events meet people that way because if you go to an event that has something of your interest you're going to meet people who are interested in the same thing that you are interested in because if they weren't they wouldn't be there right so yeah just like join tinder ask people to hang out with you or something uh couch surfing is a good thing where you can meet people as well especially people who are new to the city or people who are visiting um you guys both are new and can experience new things and you can make friends that come from all over the world and then go to events so that's the fourth thing i wish i knew that it was hard to meet people but it's not hard but it is i don't know that's number four the fifth thing I wish I knew before moving to New York that getting a job is not easy. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of people who are competing for the same job as you and I feel like it can be very tricky and very hard sometimes. Like I feel like companies really don't want to see that oh you were living in Georgia now you moved to New York but how long have you been here? Have you had a job? Like no you're gonna be my first job hire me so I can put you on my resume just in case I leave and go to another. Like it's hard to get a job. There are thousands of people competing for the same job as you and guess what there are people who are trying to do the same thing that you're doing and they're 10 times better than you or they've been doing it 10 times longer than you or you may be doing it longer for them but they might want somebody young and fresh in the company so it's very tricky so i definitely recommend like doing applications way before you get here and uh letting them know that you are moving there that you are trying to secure a job and that you know you're applying to things that you can make a lot of money from but that you actually are interested in because you don't want to get a job not like it and then be like i need to find another job and then you quit and then you can't find another job for the next two three months and then it's just kind of hard and tricky so getting a job is hard but just stick at it and i feel like you will find the right one for you so for number six i feel like you guys need to know that you need to look at all four barrels in jersey city i feel like a lot of people think oh well i live in jersey city but then i don't really live in new york literally for me i'm going to explain this to you guys before i explain it i know somebody's saying why four barrels there are five barrels me personally i will never live in the bronx that's just my personal opinion there are a lot of project housing in the bronx and i just want to avoid any high crime areas and areas that are tricky to navigate i went through the bronx one time and i literally had a mental breakdown and it was not fun and i was i didn't feel safe so i wasn't really happy so look at manhattan look at queens queens is actually really nice it's like a suburb of new york um brooklyn is also in my top four because brooklyn is getting very gentrified which means the inflation of cost is going to go up but it's very nice in certain areas and yeah it's really nice i really like brooklyn the brown soldier beautiful beautiful the parks were beautiful the people were nice so look in brooklyn as well and then the last one that people seem to forget about is staten island staten island is a barrel and it is a part of new york city so look at staten island i feel like that's another suburb of new york it's really nice as well so check out staten island and then if you want to go a little bit farther long island whatever um and then people seem to forget about jersey city jersey is literally literally right across the water um the whole bogan jersey city area it's really nice and i love it so definitely look at jersey city you can find rent that's a lot cheaper as well um but look at all those barrels if you have to look at the bronx then you can do that but i just say four barrels long island and jersey city so 
yeah so for number seven i wish i knew that the subways are amazing if i would have known this i probably would have sold my car and just shipped everything down here but it was more convenient for me to just drive up here with everything i owned in my car and that was amazing for me i still use my car but i absolutely love the subway honestly if you're moving here you don't really need a car honestly let's be honest you guys the subways are amazing they're lifesavers on top of that you don't have to pay for tolls you won't have to pay high car insurance car insurance here for my car is around like almost $400 and that's only for basic coverage but on top of that the subways are convenient yes you'll have subway carts that are stinky yes you'll have subway carts that are packed yes you'll have subway carts that are hot but I'm telling you, the subway is slept on and it literally is amazing. So for number eight, I wish I knew that it gets hot. And on top of that, it gets cold. I'm trying to keep a smile on my face when I say that, but I sound very enthusiastic about saying it. That's because everything I'm telling you is so true. You guys, it gets so hot here. It gets so hot here. It gets so hot here. And I really wish I knew that before I actually visited. I didn't think it will get so boiling hot. And my conclusion is that all the heat comes down from the skies, it gets trapped in between the buildings, and the heat has nowhere to escape. So guess what? When you're walking and you're jogging and you're biking and you're, you're skateboarding or rollerblading, you're going through nothing but heat. Not a speck of wind, not a speck of wind gust will ever come your way when it's hot in the summertime here. You guys, it was probably like 90 degrees and it felt like 159. You guys, I literally couldn't deal with the heat the moment i moved here i realized that it's even 10 times more hotter when you're living here because guess what if you don't have an ac unit your house your apartment or you don't have central air which a lot of these older builders don't have central air unless it's brand new renovated or it's like a high rise you're going to be hot okay when i moved here my place did not have an ac unit i had to go get one off craigslist because they were super expensive and like i said i didn't budget so i ran through my money on my bed and other stuff um and i was hot for about a week and a half trying to be cool off of a fan and there were heat advisories and things like that and now that it's the winter time you guys it's freezing it's freezing it's freezing that's all i can say i'm going to show you my coat so this is my coat and this was actually the coat that i got in europe when i lived in france um it's the pim key collection if you guys are asking but you guys this coat goes down to my knees it's lined with faux fur. I think this is faux fur. I'm hoping this is faux fur. I don't really know because I bought this before. I was like anti-fur. Um, but this is my coat. It goes down to my knees. It's so warm. But you guys, at times, the wind breaks through this and I'm freezing. And for me, I grew up in the Midwest. So I'm like, oh, the coat, that's nothing. You guys, it's a different coat up here. And that's all I'm gonna say. So for number nine, you will walk a lot, so you need a good pair of shoes. Good shoes are essential because once you get off that train, you will walk at least two to three blocks at least. And trust me, parking is hard, so you might have to park two or three blocks away, or you might have to park in a parking garage, which is like $20 per hour. And you will have to walk, and you will have to walk, and you will have to walk. Just know that you will have to walk. The streets are dirty, so have a good pair of walking shoes that you don't mind getting dirty. So for number 10, I wish I knew to avoid Times Square. I did not know this, and I was going through Times Square a lot at first, and after a while, I realized that there were a lot of annoyances in Times Square. And yes, it's nice when you see it on TV and things like that, but when you're actually there and you're not looking to be pestered about tourist things and touristy stuff and touristy events and touristy movies and touristy tours it gets really annoying so just avoid Times square at all costs i try to do it anytime possible when i'm going into the city i try to avoid it and just go all the way around it and yeah so for number 11 i feel like you need to know before you move here is that you need to put money aside so that you can get out of the city whether that means of just going to new jersey going to connecticut going to somewhere out of new york city please 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 get out of the city because at sometimes it can just feel like you're been you've been bombarded with the city just the city and some people for me personally, and I heard this from other people, is some people just forget that there is a world outside of New York. So make sure you get out of the city when you can. I recently just went back home to uh, Georgia to see my family. Well, 
to my sister's home <laughs> in Georgia where I used to live and then I went to go see my mom in Jacksonville then I went to Miami to do my finals for school and visit and chill out there by the water and I appreciated the time that I had away from the city and then I just fell in love with it again when I came back so make sure you get out of the city it's very important I feel like it's crucial for your mental health and your well-being so for number 12 if a subway car is empty it is empty for a reason I have had the unfortunate um, advantage which is very unfortunate <laughs> of walking inside of an empty subway car after I saw that all the other carts were packed full of people I'm like you know what it's this one subway car I'm about to go in here and then you'll see people doing this or step in step out you guys if that subway car is empty do not go in it because there are three of the following one a homeless person who has stunk up the entire um, cart which is very unfortunate because they are homeless and they make those their home sometimes. Two, someone's peed in the car or thrown up in the cart or even took a bowel moving in the cart. And for number three, it's usually boiling hot and has no air conditioning in the cart. So that is why you don't see people in those specific carts at times. So, lesson of the day, if the cart is empty, avoid it at all costs. So for number 13, I wish I knew that people stare. They just stare and stare and stare. And no, they don't break their stares with a blink. They just stare. So for me, I'm not used to people staring at me for too long. Like people will stare. Of course, it's a human nature thing that just happens. People stare if they like what they see. If they see something awkward, they just stare. Um, but people here, they just stare. And if you look at them in their eye, they will continue to stare and look at you in your eye. It is very annoying, but you just have to get used to it. People are going to stare. They're curious. Some people never seen you. A person that looks like you, they never seen you. And they're just interested in looking at you. So people will stare and you'll get over it. And for number 14, I wish I knew not to grocery shop at bodegas, you guys. I was at a bodega when I was in Brooklyn and I went to this bodega and I probably got maybe six or seven items and I ended up spending around $90 on these specific items. The reason why bodegas are more expensive is because they are more shop, they're smaller shops, their tax is higher and they can charge you whatever they want for a thing of almond milk. I saw a thing of almond milk for $9. It freaked me out. I was so scared and shooketh. Um, so I, like I said, I do not shop at bodegas. I don't suggest you shop at bodegas. I did that unfortunately and then I realized that, oh, I can just go to Aldi and Target. Target was less expensive than a bodega. So for number 15, I wish I knew that it's not as dangerous as you might think. Yes, TV makes you looks one way and I am a avid Law & Order SVU watcher. All Law & Order, but SVU is my favorite. And I thought that New York was gonna be so dangerous. Now keep in mind, I'm very aware of my surroundings and I mean, there is danger where people find opportunity or crooks find opportunity. So just be aware, I feel like that's the number one thing. I feel like as long as you are so aware of your, so aware, aware of your surroundings and you're open to the possibility that something can happen but you are always uh, aware you're not walking around at 12 o'clock in the morning and in the hood and looking very uh, touristy then you'll be fine so it's not as dangerous as you might think but just be aware so for number 16 i wish i knew that it was very loud you don't just have to live in manhattan for it to be loud or brooklyn for it to be loud or the queens or bronx or whatever it's loud everywhere Say this one more time, it's loud everywhere. It gets very annoying because I love silence. Silence is my best friend. <laughs> but it gets very, very loud. People blow their horns for no reason. If I knew that it would be this noisy, I probably would have reconsidered because I like my silence that much. But it took me a while and now I just kind of tune it all out. I don't even hear a majority of the time, which is a good thing. So it might take time for you to drown the noise out, but it does get loud. Please understand that it gets loud. <laughs> so for number 17, this kind of goes back to something previously that I said, but what I wish I would have knew is that monthly cards are literally your best option, you guys. Buying those day passes and buying those pay per ride and weekly cards, they're just not really worth it. Monthly cards, you have unlimited rides, literally anywhere you wanna go at any time, and the MTA runs 24 seven. Literally, subway cards, 
are amazing. And not just any subway cards, but the monthly ones. You get unlimited rides anywhere you wanna go that the train and the bus runs for only $121 a month. That is amazing. And for number 18, this actually also goes back to something that I said earlier about many people. But for number 18, if you like it, there's someone else that likes it and there's a club for it, there's a place for it, there's an event for it. So basically, if you like it, there's a community for it. So you guys, I've seen some of the weirdest things here and there were literally communities for it. So just be aware that no matter how weird or how kinky or how awkward you may think your favorite thing is there's a community for it here in new york <laughs> people from all around the world people with different ethnicities backgrounds and you might not know it but there's a community for it so for number 19 i wish i knew that roommates are a part of the new york lifestyle they just are a part of it um like i said previously rent here is very expensive and it can get very pricey but i feel like people come here to follow their dreams to be in the big city to live their dreams and when you're young you know you might not have the all the money so roommates are obviously the way to go so just don't don't be like opposed roommates but be open to it. I feel like that can definitely save you a lot of money. It can learn, you can learn how to be um, open to different people and learn about different people and learn about yourself when you're put in a situation when you do live with other people. But roommates are a part of the New York lifestyle and if you can afford to not have a roommate, good for you. But if you're unfortunate or you just wanna save more money, just go the roommate way. It'll save you a lot and you'll be okay you'll live. <laughs> and for number 20, the last one, the big 20, New York is not like the movies. I wish I knew that because I thought New York was bright lights in New York. But you guys, people live here, people go to school here, people have jobs here, families here. It's just like any other city, if not better. But it's not like the movies. You're not just gonna walk down Chelsea. You're not just gonna go to Chelsea and walk down 8th Street and get picked up by Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina's modeling agency and be a model, like be America's Next Top Model. You know what I'm saying? It's not like the movies, but it's very, um, it's very big with opportunity and spontaneous and loving and amazing. And yeah, like it's everything that I thought it would be if I didn't thought on it too much or think about it too much but it's amazing it's like the movies but it is amazing you'll find the amazingness in it based off your own interests so yeah those are my 20 things i wish i knew so if you guys are interested in more content like this for this area and knowing more about it like how to find an apartment uh, what are good things to do in the area then let me know hope you guys enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up also comment down below some things that you might know that i wish i did that i wish i knew that i don't know or your your advice that you wish you knew um if you want, want to move here as well so leave it down in the comments below and i love you guys so so much thank you guys so much for watching my video making it to the end i know i rambled a lot but I appreciate you guys so much. And again, like I said, welcome to 2019. Um, and I hope you guys are having an amazing day, evening, noon, night. And I love you guys so much. I'm sending nothing but love, light, and positive energy your way. And I'll see you guys in my next one.